Hi, I'm Glenn Ayo from the Western Bay Council and I'm going to talk to you about uh, environmental groups that I do a lot of work with and I'm going to talk about what's amazing about some of these groups. Hopefully it'll give you some good ideas about things that you can do yourself. An audience of zero shouldn't be too hard. Uritara Estuary Managers up in Katikati, they work with four entire catchments. They don't just talk about it, but they actually do work right down from the estuary doing trapping and mangrove removal right up to the top of the catchment. Uh, they work with landowners all over the place and have a lot of different management uh, programs. The amazing thing about the Makatu Taipuri is this entire project that's gone for 15 years has only got one volunteer. It's been the same volunteer all that time. That makes them amazing. They're also the only restoration project in the district that targets whitebait habitat specifically. That's an example of where the ponds are. There's actually a lot more ponds than you can see there. It's on the Kaituna River. Um, and they're definitely setting a model of best practice for whitebait restoration. So we're hoping other people will pick up on it and start putting those same ponds in. These guys are amazing because they're effective and they're local. You've already heard from uh, Tanya. They're in three schools at the moment and they will be expanding to other schools. But they don't just target the kids and the work that they do, but they target the adults as well, the helpers, the parents, the teachers, and the teacher committees and so on. Uh, more from them, they also have these things called biodiversity management plans. You should take note of that because uh, they get a lot of money. $193,000 over five years and they provide a lot of employment for locals uh, to do the work out there that needs to be done. There's only a certain amount can be done by volunteers and then you have to think about funds. These guys are amazing because they're high achievers. It's just amazing. Over a hundred volunteers, they've got nine committees and they've just done their rat control and they got a 0% rat count which is like major thumbs up. That's a mist net on the left hand side there that they catch Kōkāko with. They also have a paid volunteer coordinator which is making really big changes to the way that that trust is able to work and look after so many committees and people. Those are all the things that the volunteer coordinator does. Uh, and the bottom one is one of the most important ones, the follow-up of volunteers. Ongateti, they're amazing because they're a true social enterprise. They uh, generate their own finances year after year, decade after decade, in fact. They take through a lot of school groups, they've got 92 beds. They also do weddings and conferences, and they have bush walks, uh, and all sorts of education related to the bush. Working with them is this group, Ongateti Forest Trust, and why are they amazing? They're amazing because they work with so many other groups, and they work with them really effectively as well. Look, they've got the deer stalkers working with them and Forest and Bird at the same table, which I think is pretty cool. They've also done translocation of weka, but uh, most of the weka, unfortunately, got chased away by dogs. These guys are amazing because of their close relationship with Tangata Whenua. Um, in the estuary that they're working in, this is the birth of the uh, Takitiwi Waka, so when you're paddling out on the water, you can actually see it. Have a look at their logo. Black face, white face, facing together and working together. This is a group at Amokoroa and it's an overarching umbrella group. They've got nine groups underneath them. They hold funds, they do administration. They've also got art and roading groups coming and working with them. But they enable the groups themselves to get on with the work. And this is one of their groups in Kuni Reserve. What's amazing about this is we've got a dog exercise area which is back from that, that viewing platform and on the other side there's a fence in between them and on the other side is an ecological area, no humans or dogs going in there. So it's just really cool to have those two areas next to each other. Frank, if you want to go somewhere and hear some birds, go to Pukatoki because you sit in the bush there and you try to listen to a bird and you wish the other birds would shut up so that you could hear it properly. The place is full of birds, it's amazing. It's only 35 hectares. That's them doing an extension to the bush. This is one of the artworks that they've got up there. It's, um, it's an old, what do they call them? A boogie or bogey or something. It's an old trolley with one of the old logs on it used to run right through there. They've also done zero percent rats, which is amazing. 
Best free of Makaroa. This is of interest to Tapuki because we're talking about maybe having a rat free uh, program here in Tapuki. These guys have their entire peninsula covered. They've got around about 100 landowners that, that trap and poison rats on their properties. They've been doing it for, since 2005 and they're quite happy to keep on doing it. So my question to you is what's amazing about your group and what could you be doing uh, given those examples? What are some amazing things that you could be doing? Oh, and I almost forgot to mention another amazing group, which is Environment Tapuki, who are doing the expo here today, which is amazing. Um, that mirror is just have a look at the mirror, have a look at yourself, see what's going on, all of these people, and all of the different stands that are here today. Uh, and then maybe bringing you predator free Tapuki sometime in the future. So there's a table over the back there that you can talk to them about that. So that's it, my 20 seconds have all run out. Thanks very much. Thanks.